Hi, welcome back to High Culture. Today we have a very special guest with us, Kinoshita Himiko san, a writing designer in the kimono industry. Konnichiwa, Kinoshita Himiko Thank you, Yume, for inviting me to the show. It is my honor to be here. I've heard a lot of interesting stories about how kimono has come about and how the prototype was actually from China. Well, uh, the idea of how cultures actually cross the boundaries is in fact very interesting. So please do tell me more about it. Hi, so that's the It is truly a fascinating process. Please do tell us more about it. I'm pretty sure our viewers crave to hear as much as I would like to. It is my pleasure. So I have a book with me and it's a book left behind to me from my ancestors. It has all the records of the different types of kimono that my predecessors have designed. It tells the story of how kimono changes as my predecessors went through different era phases. Please let me bring you through the story of kimono through the lenses of my ancestors. Tracing back on the prototype of kimono, my ancestor, Asuka, a skilled seamstress, was first approached by Japanese tribal chiefs and priestess to recreate the outfits worn by the Han people from China. That was approximately in the 4th century. Dear diary, the tribal chiefs came to me today. They gave me a book that consists of various Han styles of its design. They requested me to make them and promises to pay with additional sack of rice. So I agreed. I was extremely intrigued by the design of the outfit. It's unlike anything I've seen before. It's a front wrapping robe with attached collar and rectangular sleeves. Well, that's basically how my family business came into existence with the descendants of Kinoshitai continue what she had started. My family eventually became renowned for intricate craftsmanship. It was during the Nara and the Heian period where the design of kimono took an interesting turn. During the 8th century, to be civilized was increasingly to be Chinese, and Kikyo, a young seamstress, inherited the family business. Dear Diary, the king has passed a law today to adopt the rules for court dresses explicitly based on those of the official Tang clothing coats. The code specified that all robes should be crossed left side over the right side in Chinese fashion as it would be considered barbaric to cross the right side over the left side. Dear Diary, I was visited by some court officials today. They brought with them two different robe designs. I've called these two different styles as Age Kubi and Tari Bukui. Age Kubi Start Rope is a traditional round necked, narrow sleeved style inspired by the Sui dynasty. It's most commonly worn by men, whereas women adopted the crossover neckline Tari Buki worn by Tang ladies. Oh, how elegant and refined are these Tang ladies! Dear Diary, I noticed that some Tang ladies brought back by our invoice to China wore long skirts tied over their robes with a ribbon. I believe that there are much more clothing designs that we can create with such an idea. Dear Diary, Granny Kikyo used to share with me all the stories of how our country used to have so much contact with China. All the fascinating things that the Chinese envoys would bring along when they visit our country. But it's so hard for me to visualize how open the society was during Granny Kikyo's time. Traveling out of the country was banned by the court. I'm thinking about designing kimono in a way that it will be unique to our own culture. Dear Diary, We have so many orders recently. There are so many varieties in the type of kimono nowadays. Customers who are more affluent these days would pay us more to make for them prettier kimonos. Also, there are now more and more types of kimono available. For example, a ceremonial kimono is different from an everyday kimono. An everyday kimono also differs with respect to the age of the wearer and the place that the wearer is at. Dear Diary, 
Today, I've attended the Mark's daughter coming of each ceremony, Sei Jin no Hi. She looks so beautiful in her official costume. <sighs> the way her Jin Hi Toe was layered shows that she is someone of great taste. All 12 layers of her kimono was well arranged. Indeed, crimson plum of the spring matches well with the lady's grace and the beautiful season. Despite the thick layering of the kimono, the process of simplification took place. For instance, late in the Heian Age, women discarded karagino, which is a type of jacket, and mo, which is a half skirt, and treating previously private wear cloak called ko uchigi as public formal wear. And this process continued into the subsequent warrior age and beyond. Dear Diary, the gloomy clouds above the palace doesn't seem to disperse. The samurais are gaining huge amount of power that is now no longer under the control of the emperor. Also, it seems as though there are much more Chinese merchants in the market. They have brought in so many exquisite things that I have not seen before. The styles of the Chinese Ming Dynasty was extremely popular. I guess I might have to wait till the next shipment comes in to buy some of their fabrics. Dear Diary, I've realised that there is a drop in the sales of our shop. Elaborative kimono are no longer popular among our customers. It seems as though the small sleeve kimono kosode is now a rising trend as it is more practical. Other things that I've noticed is that women of the new ruling class do continue to wear courtly formal wear but in fewer layers. I guess it's a way for them to display their frugality and practical-minded nature, yet at the same time, not forgetting to be cultured and refined. Dear Diary, Today, I've walked past some ladies wearing a pure white kosude and red hakama. I've heard that they are the wives and daughters of the samurais. What a unique way of portraying their identity. Dear Diary, Today, I was visited by a Ming merchant and his wife. I hit off really well with the lady as she offered to teach me the skills of breeding silkworms and cultivating cotton. I was really grateful. Dear Diary, we found a way to increase the variety of colours for the kosole. It's amazing how the discovery of various ways of dyeing the fabric could make so much difference to the traditional kosole. I am inspired to create more designs. Dear Diary, I hear stories that the Imperial is struggling with many political conflicts. The court even separated into two. It's so much harder to create kimonos for the Imperials when there is so much tension around. Dear Diary, I'm overloaded with work because the ladies from both courts are sending in requests for something different, so as to outshine one another. Let's hope I can get a new idea soon. Dear Diary, today was great. I finally thought of an idea that could satisfy the customers. We will make the kosode the outerwear instead of wearing it inside, topped with white sleeved layers. Since the white kosode is now the outerwear, we can paint different colors and patterns on it. That way, each kimono for the court ladies will be unique in terms of the designs found on the kosode. Dear Diary, our shop is booming with businesses. The newer, softer version of the kosode was extremely well received by our customers. The pattern fabric was extremely popular as well. I'm inspired to create more designs. Dear Diary, the political instability is still persisting since the last period and the social system is becoming very distinct, with people of different social status wearing kimonos of different styles. Furthermore, kimonos beginning to be regarded as an art form instead of just something to wear, especially amongst the wives of wealthy merchants. They even hold fashion contests with some of the kimono pieces that they got from our shop. It's tougher to get inspirations nowadays as compared to great-grandmothers 
because Edo is closing itself from the outside world. I guess I should start being more creative. Judging from grandmother's works, it seems like uniquely coloured and patterned kimonos seem so popular. I heard from Uncle Hayato that even the samurais of each feudal domain wore different coloured kimonos. Of course, the samurais have a whole new style of apparel which consists of three parts, namely the kimono, the kamishimo and the hakama. Dear Diary, I'm really happy today because it seems like my new creation was a big hit. A concept of flanking the body like abstract wings came to my mind, which is really appropriate to address the gravity of a girl's coming of age. As she wore the outfit to her birthday celebration, it was noticed by one of the imperial officials and my concept became really popular. Dear Diary, I'm extremely elated today because the king has acknowledged Kinoshita for our constant dedication and loyalty for creating the best kimono pieces for the court. His Majesty even offered to reveal to us the latest dyeing technology that was discovered, namely Yuzen dyeing. I can't wait to explore the numerous designs that can be crafted with this new technology. Dear Diary, I just witnessed the Queen wearing an extremely intricate and extravagant piece today. It was laced with golden threads, highlighting the flowered embroidery on the glistening back fabric, topped with embellishment layered over the damask. Wow, Kimoshito-san! It felt like you had traveled back in time. I see your ancestors have contributed greatly to the designs of Kimono today and the direction of how Kimono had come about. Thank you for your kind words. I really do respect my ancestors for their dedication in Kimono. Although the past experience of my ancestors has contributed to the flourishing of the Kimono culture in Japan, there are a few more key features of Kimono today that differ from the past. So an example would be the obi here that I'm wearing now in my yukata. Is the obi of the modern Kimono has are now rather thicker and wider as compared to that of the past. And this might be due to the influence of Uemura Kichiya, a well kabuki actor who appeared wearing a white and long obi tied in a bow. Well, that was really insightful, Kinoshita san. We are able to learn so many things from you today for you sharing with your kimono history and all. Um, thank you once again for coming to our show, and I think I might actually get a kimono for myself. It is my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yes, do come drop by sometime. Here marks the end of our show. See you again next week. Sayonara! Sayonara.